Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Again, this is a day that the Lord has made, and I am rejoicing and in. I got so much to be thankful for. God woke me up this morning and started me on my way. He put clapping in my hands. He put running in my feet. He put joy deep down in my sanctified soul. And I got so much to be thankful for because God is still on the throne. God is still in the blessed business. He has, shone, he has smiled down on us yet another day. Amen, amen. And we getting ready to get ready to get started this morning. Amen. Good morning, Don. Good morning, Sandra. Good morning, Oscar. Just good morning, Pastor Bobby. Good morning, people of God. Good morning, world. World, look out. Amen. God is still up to something when we are down to nothing. Glory be to God. And let us go to the Lord in prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, we come before a good, 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 good Father this morning, God. Just thanking you for your goodness and your mercy. We come thanking you, God for all that you have done for us. We just pause, Lord God, and, just, and reflect on your goodness and your mercy. We pause, amen, to just reflect, Lord God, how far you have brought us, Lord God, down through the years, Lord God. You have brought us through danger, seen and unseen, down through the years that you have made so many ways out of nothing. Down through the years, you have healed us time and time again. Down through the years, God, you have blocked, Lord God, the attack of the enemies, Lord God. Down through the years, Lord God, you have provided for us, Lord God, and you have kept us, Lord God, when we have been unable to keep ourselves, Lord God. Nobody can do us like Jesus. Nobody can do us like the Lord. And on this, Lord God, first Sunday in September, Lord God, the ninth month of the year, Lord God. We come with thanksgiving. We come with praise. We come with an attitude of, of worship. We come, Lord God, to forget about ourselves and just concentrate on you. So right now, I ask you to take control of this very service. Take control of our ears and give us ears to hear. Take control of our minds that it does not wander off, Lord God, that it be centered on you. Take control, Lord God, of our hands and our feet, Lord God. We give our away to you this morning to use us, Lord God. And Lord God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. You are my strength and you are my redeemer. And I pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Good morning again to everyone who thought it not robbery. Amen. At 1030 or whatever time you got on to join Greater Spiritual in worship and in praise. Amen. I'm the pastor of Greater Spiritual Community Church in Indian Head, Maryland. Amen. And that's a, the location does not matter. Amen. Because God is into a virtual worship. And so, you know, it, I know this at the beginning, but if anyone feels so led, to be a part of greater spiritual, amen. I welcome you, I welcome you, I welcome you, and I'll give you an invitation at the end of the service also. So at this time, uh, I told uh, Minister Merlin I was not gonna have a selection this morning to so just stand by until next week, amen. So this morning, I want you to turn, we have two little small scriptures that I'm gonna read from. The first one is Ephesians 4, verse 28. Ephesians 4, verse uh, 28, rather. And it reads, let him bestow still no more, but rather let him labor, working <clears throat> the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needeth. And the second passage of scripture is Colossians chapter three, verses 23 and 24. And it, and it reads, whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord you shall receive the reward of the inheritance. We serve the Lord Christ. Amen. So again, the scriptures this morning coming from Ephesians 4.28 and <clears throat> Colossians 3.23. Amen. Amen. And so this morning, I wanted, this is Labor Day weekend. Amen. So I wanted to talk on the subject 
work unto the glory of God. Work unto the glory of God. You saints, all the work that we do is very important in our life. Whether we're working at home, whether we're working at the church, whether we're working at the school as a student, or we're working in our communities. And, on, and we come to church on Sundays and we are influenced by the values and the commands of God. But sadly, when we go to work on Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays, Thursdays, Friday, and some even on Saturday, we are influenced by the values and the commands of a uh, 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 man. Amen. We are trying to live under two distinct authorities that are often in conflict with one another. And it seems to me that Paul is saying that our work worlds do not have to be in conflict because all the work we do should be done not just for man, but it should be rather done into the glory of God. So I, so I read a couple of scriptures in your hearing this morning that deal with work. And as we look at these passages of scripture, I want to highlight four questions, and uh, uh, four questions, amen, and give you four important facts about work as we celebrate Labor Day, amen. Amen. The first question I want to ask you is what is the nature of work? What is the nature of work? Our scripture, Paul tells us in our scripture is to consider our work as a service to God. And so regardless what work you are doing, regardless where you are working at, we are to serve God in the work that we perform. Right. If we look at, look at work that way, it would dispel the attitude of judging people by the kind of work which they do. The world says that the person who works with his hands is not nearly as important as the person who works with his mind. That's what the world says. And therefore it gives a greater reward to executives and supervisors and the people who think things through and tell others what to do. And that often produces a professional snobbiness. Amen. There's amen. snobbiness in, amen, in the workplace. Amen. There's snobbiness in church. Amen. 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 Our workplace, our schools, our community, our church, our home is our platform amen. God has given us to serve him. Amen. 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 He's given us various places to serve him. Amen. It is our ministry and the way that we glorify God in our work environment yes. is working at it with all of our heart. That means that we should remain enthusiastic in our work. Amen. Amen. The word enthusiasm comes from in theos, which means in God. And therefore, the word of God tells us the, uh, the more in God we are and the more God is in us, the more enthusiasm we will display when we are at work, amen. All right. And to be honest, on a scale of one to 10, how enthusiastic are you about your job? <laughs> how enthusiastic are you about school attendance if you're a student? Enthusiasm would make the difference between being a mediocre employee or an excellent employee. Yes. Amen. Enthusiasm would make the difference from doing our best or just collecting a paycheck. Amen. When we work or when we serve for the approval of Jesus, we will always do more than the bare minimum. 
in the time of Jesus, the G I mean the Jews rather were under the domination of the Roman Empire. And a Roman uh, soldier had the legal authority to demand that any Jew carry his, his equipment for exactly one mile. And the Jews, they just hated to do this, amen. You know, just like people today, they hate for anybody to tell them what to do, amen. My grandson, when he was younger, he used to say, you are not the boss of me, amen, amen. And <laughs> people still have that mentality, amen. Even though the boss may tell them something to do, they still feel you are not the boss of me, amen. So well, people yeah. hate to be told what to do, amen. 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 And so, again, the Jews hated this, and they bitterly counted each step, amen, until they got to one mile. And when they reached exactly one mile, they dropped the load and said with disgust, there, I've done what is required. Now, don't bother me anymore, amen. But saying, All right. Jesus uh, requires a higher standard for his followers. Come on, he said, if someone forces you to go one mile, go with that person two miles. Matthew 5, 41. A Roman soldier would not soon forget the person who cheerfully carried his equipment the second mile. Even when not asked to do it. So I ask you today, are you a one mile worker or are you a single mile student? Do you watch the clock? And as soon as that clock strikes the exact time, you are due to clock out. Regardless, you could be in the middle of a meeting. You could be in the middle of an important phone call. You drop everything and leave and say, my time is up. Amen. Amen. Mm. Do you only do the bare minimum expected and nothing that's included in your job description? Do you work or do you study? When someone is looking and at the moment they are out of sight, you are on your device talking or texting, you're on your device playing video games, shopping, or surfing the internet, amen. Or do you go the extra mile and leave the mark of excellence on your workplace, amen. People will always remember second mile workers. But I let you know today, they remember also those one mile workers too, amen, who was not willing, amen, to do anything else that somebody's asking them to do. Or they don't have to ask. They can see a piece of paper on the floor. And because it's not their job description, they're not the janitor, they feel no amen. obligation to pick it up, amen, amen. amen. Also, people amen. remember those type of attitudes mm -hmm. that if you're a one miler, even if you're a two miler, amen. Second mile, I mean, second mile people, they excel. Around 1920, a pharmacist brought a drugstore on the south side of Chicago. Soon he was bored with the job and he began to dream how he could make it more exciting. It was during a time when people were just beginning to call in their orders using the telephone. So this man decided to challenge <clears throat> himself to make his job more interesting. He decided to see how quickly he could deliver a telephone order. And when someone called in, he repeated that the order out loud, including the person's name and address. And as soon, I mean, as he spoke with the caller, his assistant filled the order and the driver immediately left to deliver it. And the druggist kept, kept the customer on the phone chatting until the order arrived at the caller's home. This kind of prompt service Amen. was revolutionary and word soon spread. It became the yeah. busiest pharmacist in Chicago. <laughs> this man bought other stores and added new ideas and now it's a major chain. And this person was none other than Charles Walgren. Today, there are over 8,000 Walgreens because of a person who decided to go the second mile. And as a Christian, he worked unto the glory of God. Amen. 
I also did the extra mile. When I came into the government, I came as a GS2. I didn't know based on how to even turn on the computer, but I've got interest in it. I want to know how this computer worked inside and out, amen. And even when I was in schooling, I, 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 just, I determined that I was gonna learn everything that I could, amen, and take advantage of every opportunity. And I, went, I, and, and when I retired, I went from a GS2, amen, to a GS14. I was a GS15 part-time, amen, amen, amen. All because I went the extra mile, amen. I was not Over there the just to clock in and clock out. I was not just there to just to do something, amen, say I did the work, amen. I wanted to be the <clears throat> best that I could, amen. Even before I even cracked the book open, amen. I wanted to know what computers is, amen. And now people still calling me, well, oh, how you do this? How you do that and everything, amen, <laughs> amen. <laughs> so Paul wrote that in doing our daily work, saints, we have to keep in the forefront of our mind that it's the Lord Jesus that we are serving. Amen. I don't care if you're working for the government or the military or the whoever and stuff. We have to still realize that we are working for Jesus. John Scott was a beloved British pastor and author. <coughs> the way to serve the Lord in our job is to always imagine that we are working for Jesus instead of somebody else. Amen. See what I'm saying? It's possible for the Amen. housewife to cook a meal as if Jesus Christ were coming to dinner. Amen. He said it was possible for teachers and to educate children and, and doctors to treat patients and nurses to care for patients, for lawyers to have clients and for businesses to have clients, for accountants to order books. In every case, as if they were serving Jesus Christ. Now, I tell you today, saints, we need those mindsets today because it's so hard to get good customer service today you can go to a restaurant you can call a government business business amen no matter where you go it is poor customer service they don't realize to go the extra mile they don't realize that amen that the good they do could cause a promotion in the future amen amen amen, amen. so if you're working today and stuff you know remember <clears throat> think about who you're working for think about providing Good customer. <laughs> Amen. Several years, I came across a letter. It was an imaginary letter that someone that was addressing to Jesus, son of, of Joseph. Amen. The carpenter shop in Nazareth, and it came from this Jordan management consultants in Jerusalem, and supposedly Jesus had sent them resumes of his twelve apostles for that company to call in and to evaluate the people. And this management consulting firm had given the 12 apostles a battery of tests. And now he's writing back to Jesus to tell him his conclusion. And looking at this imaginary letter, I want to read some of their, uh, this company's findings after testing the 12 men that Jesus had selected. It, it went on to say, in the opinion, of our staff, most of your candidates are lacking in background and education and vocational aptitude for the type of work you are they are undertaking. He said, Simon Peter is emotionally unstable and given to fits of temper. Andrew has an absolute has absolutely no qualities of leadership, and the two brothers James and John. The sons of Zebedee, amen, seem to place personal interests above team loyalty. Thomas demonstrates a questioning attitude that would tend to undermine morale. In addition, we feel it's our duty to tell you, Jesus, that Matthew has been back, I mean, has been blacklisted by the greater Jerusalem. Better business, bureau, uh, better business bureau, uh, better business bureau. I miss that word for some people talking in time, but you understand what I'm saying. From the great, from the Jerusalem BBB, and that James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon the Zealot, 
and that is definitely have radical leanness. He said, in the light of all my findings, we, we recommend that you continue searching for other candidates with more managerial experience and proven capabilities. However, one of the candidates shows great potential. He's a man of ability and resourcefulness. He has a keen business mind and has contacts in high places, and he's greatly motivated and ambitious. Therefore, we recommend Judas Iscariot <laughs> as your chief financial officer Jesus. and administrative assistant. Thanks. Hey, I am afraid that is just the way the world thinks. Mm -hmm. Because as we look at people, we don't look for the same things Jesus looked for. Amen. And we miss some of the things that Jesus sees. Well, Jesus was able to see a potential and a capability that we often miss. He was <clears> able <throat> to look beyond our faults and yeah. see our needs. Yes, yes, yes. And he was even willing to give Judas a chance, even though he knew yes. Judas. Yes. And so I commend. <laughs> Every business, every manager, every supervisor that is willing to give people yes. a chance after they have messed up, who see that person potential and not just their past. Amen. Again, what is the nature of work? Well, Paul says that we have to consider our work or our labor as a service to God. No matter what we do, whether we are mowing lawns or preaching sermons, whether we are ushering, cleaning bathrooms or mopping floors, whether we're working outside or inside, whatever we do, Paul is telling us we are to do it to the glory of God, amen. not amen. just to gain status or power, amen. Martin Luther, uh, Luther King Jr. once said, he said, if a man is called to be a street sweeper. He should sweep streets, even as Michelangelo painted, or as Beethoven composed music, or Shakespeare wrote poetry. He should sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will pause to say, here lives a great street sweeper Street, street sweeper who did his job well. Amen. Amen. And so Paul was telling us in Colossians and Ephesians that whatever we do, we put our heart into it. We give it all that we have. We are not here to please people. We are not just to get a paycheck. And <clears throat> although a paycheck does pay bills, amen, but that should not be the real reason we are working. The reason we should be working is to glorify the Lord in whatever we do. And if we were pleasing God, we should be pleased as well. Because some people, they are not going to take a job unless it pays them so much money. Some mm. people are not going to take a job unless it has prestige. But Jesus, through Paul, is saying, whatever you do, amen. We're not here to please ourselves or people. We're here to please God and to work unto the glory of God. That was, that was a sign in a wonder that, that read, boy wanted. And young John Simons, though he was a lazy person, he saw an opportunity and he applied for this position. And he was quickly hired by an elderly man named Mr. Peters. And the pace was leisurely, leisurely, so he enjoyed the job. They required much from him. But toward the middle of the afternoon, however, he was sent up to the attic, which was a dingy place full of cobwebs, amen. He, he was sent there to find a, a long, deep box. And in the box, he was requested to sort through it, amen, and see what could be saved. John was disappointed and stuff, you know, and all, and when he got to the box, he just saw junk, amen. 
and and so he just came back downstairs and told him you know he didn't see nothing worth doing amen and so at closing time he was paid and told not to return and the next morning the old sign went back up boy warnings amen Crawford Hill this time was the next one to be employed and so when he was asked to tie up that same box however he spent hours separating all the unstable nails and screws from the things to be discarded. And suddenly he raised down the stairs, amen, all excited because he had found a $20 bill at the very bottom of the box. And then at last, the store owner, Mr. Peter, he said he had discovered a conscious interest board to whom he could entrust his business when he retired. And this young man, he became Mr. Peter's successor because he found fortune in an old junk box, amen. Saints, we could be missing out on a promotion amen. when we don't see and understand the nature of work. It's to work to the glory of God yes. or to feel Jesus as our boss. Yes. Are we seeing many of many your labor as an opportunity to shine. To the extent we carry our Christian principles into the world, our work becomes a Christian ministry. This work uh, gives us new meaning and dignity. Thanks. If we claim to be Christians, then our Christianity is not only one day a week. God cares what we do Monday, through Saturday. If we are working always to the glory of God and seeing our job as a ministry, amen? A manufacturer exactly said, he said, I don't usually hire people who tell me they're Christian. I don't advertise that I'm a Christian either, but I try to run my company the way I think God wants it to run. And when asked why, he didn't hire Christians. He said, I've hired Christians, amen, because they said they were Christians and they turned out to be some of the worst employees. Help I've us, God. Help. Lord Jesus, help. He went on to say, one guy was always standing around preaching mm. to other people instead of getting his work done. He said, I couldn't afford him. Another guy kept coming in late day after day and his supervisor fired him, and he came to me angry to get his job back. And when I told him his supervisor made the right decision, he said, I thought you were a Christian. Imagine this, saints, that this man who did not do his job thought he could take advantage of another Christian, amen. Well, so after this, this man said, no more Christians, amen. Saints, how are we representing Christ on our job, amen, amen. Are we giving, giving God of Christ a bad mark, amen, because the way that we work, we're never on time, amen, amen. We, we, we're taking these long breaks, amen. We, again, we're always on the phone or surfing the internet, amen, always standing around gossiping, can't ever find you at your desk, amen. Jesus. Amen. <laughs> And then when it's time to give you an evaluation true. and you give them just an average evaluation, then they get a man that they yes. end in a superb evaluation for not doing their job. Amen. Go amen. 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 The third, I mean, the second thing I want to ask the question, I want you, what is the purpose of work? And mm. Paul gives us an answer to that question in Ephesians 4, 28. He says, let him who steals, steal no longer, but rather let him labor, performing with his own hands what is good, in order that he may have something to share with him who has need. And what Paul is saying is that the purpose behind work is not to accumulate possessions, but the purpose is to meet needs. Now, that might be a little hard to swallow, amen. But the Bible discourages hoarding and greed and, co and covetous, amen. Paul is saying the purpose in our working is that we might have money to support 
ourselves and our family and others yes. who are in a need. Amen. Amen. We are told to give special attention to one another. And when there's a need among us, like it is in Hades today, like it is in, 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 in Louisiana today, like it is in other places, amen. He says, we need to be concerned about other people, amen, amen. And so we work in order that we have the, we have the ability to help, amen. And guess what? When people choose to be intentionally unemployed, amen, it could lead to serious problems for both individuals and society. I'm not talking about being laid off, I mean, I'm that there are some people who don't ever want to work. They are content to lay up on the couch and watch TV. They are content for mom to take care of. They're content for a spouse to take care of. They are content even for their children to take care of them, amen. But for these individuals, it can lead to being unable to pay the bills and provide for one's family, amen. Some people are content for the church, amen, to take care of. They think it's the church, amen, that should pay all the bills. It's the church, amen, to, to see that they have everything they need. It's not the church's responsibility, amen. Yeah. The responsibility lies at the end of your coat sleeve, of your, of your shirt, amen, which is your hand. Your hands are made to work, amen, amen, amen. 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 First Timothy <clears throat> 5, 8 says, but if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he is denied the faith. And That's right. First, then an unbeliever. Yes. God ordained work for the good of mankind. And when we deny this fact, then it reveals that we have a problem in our relationship with the Lord. Yes. Well, either acting as an unbeliever or it reveals that we really are not a believer. Amen. Amen. So when people again refuse to work, this also leads to stealing. A December 20, 2020 Forbes article says, there's a well-known historical correlation between unemployment and theft. Mm -hmm. This same article continues mm -hmm. to say rather a, that a new study shows that 40% of small business owners said shoplifting has increased since the beginning of the pandemic. Saints working will alleviate the temptation to steal. And not only that, working provides an opportunity to give rather than to take. Amen. Again, Amen. In Ephesians 4, 28, let, who him, let him who stole steal no longer. Rather, let him label working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give. Amen? Amen. The last thing that I want, the question I want to ask you, what is the result of work? Amen. 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 Good morning, uh, Pastor Blackman. Amen. Have you heard the saying that an idle hand and an idle mind are a devil's workshop? Mm. Yes. Some, some years ago, many hives of bees bees were brought from a cold climate to the tropical island of Barbados. Right away, the bees went to work, gathering honey for the winter, which their instinct taught them to expect. The, but the winter didn't come, however, and the bees became lazy. They stopped working. They stopped gathering honey. Instead, they spent their time flying around and stinging People. <laughs> people don't work saints they sting other people they mm. get into all kinds of trouble and so work has a tendency to keep people out of trouble can yeah. you, can you can, can, think about this again this morning why we got so many many people killing one another stealing one another amen Amen. They are not working and they are stinging other people mm -hmm. to take what that have worked for. Amen. Amen. Work is important. <laughs> and from the moment God made Adam and Eve, God gave them work to do. 
But work in yes. itself cannot fully satisfy. But we think it can because we identify so much with what we do. When people ask people what they do and, and, and who they are, a lot of times they say, I'm a lawyer, I'm a teacher, I'm a doctor, I'm a preacher, right. I'm a deacon, I'm a teacher, amen. They identify themselves with the work what they, they do. do, amen, amen. So while we might get tired at work or even tired of our job, the Bible teaches that work has intrinsic values, amen? Yes. Amen. So the result of work is that it makes mm. us a better person when mm. we work for what we want. And also when we partner with the Lord, we view our work as a calling, not just a job, not just a career, and when we view it as a calling, we will experience, we will, we will, we will, mm -hmm. we will experience a sense of unfulfillment if we don't work, if we don't fulfill our calling. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I want to uh, want to conclude with some of the don'ts of work. Amen. First of all, don't go to work and brag. Amen. About how wonderful a, a Christian you are. Amen. Amen. Don't don't come to brag that that, that 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 you are this or that. That's a turn off. Amen. Amen. You might think that you are being bold. Amen. But amen. But it's a turn off. Amen. Because self righteousness has always been repulsive. Amen. Secondly, amen. don't nag. Don't go to work and nag. Don't carry a Bible yes. under your arm. And every time someone cusses or do something, you pull out mm. the Bible and says. Well, the Bible says, thou should not steal, amen. The Bible says, thou should not swear, amen. The Bible says that the, the, the drunkens go to hell. The Bible amen. says this and Bible says that, amen. Don't do that because That's all right. you're going to do again is to turn somebody away. Amen. 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 Thirdly, when you get to work, don't lag. As a Christian, it's important for you to do your work and do it well. To set an example for other people. Be there before your time, amen, to do your job, amen. If you're lazy, then that's a poor testimony mm -hmm. for the Lord. So do your job, do it well as you're doing it for Christ, amen. Again, be on time, be yes. early, amen, amen. Mm -hmm. And lastly, don't say, it. be really careful not to go back to your own old way of life. Be careful, amen, that you don't steal. Not even a pen or steal time. Make mm. sure you keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Mm. So let me give you those four things again not to do. Don't brag, don't mm. nag, don't lag, and don't sag. Amen. Mm. And then I'm getting ready to conclude. When Jesus came to earth, he came as a worker. In fact, for most of his adult life, he worked as a carpenter but he had a much more significant job assignment. His work was to do exactly what his father wanted him to do. Yes. John 5, 17, Jesus said, my father is always at his work to this very day, and I too am working. Now, Jesus' work, who is the son of God, amen, amen. What makes people think that they don't have to work, amen? Jesus was a carpenter, amen. When his father was God, God the Father, amen. What makes us think that, 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 that a job is beneath us, amen, amen, amen. So the primary work of Jesus was to come to earth and to die as our substitute on the cross. And because Jesus completed the work that he was given to do, we can now experience the full benefits of his labor. Amen. Are you completing your work? Or every time you somebody make you mad, you quitting that job, or you walking off that job, or you cursing somebody out on the job? Amen. Are you clean? Are you completing your work? Or are you falling short of your work? Amen. Jesus set the example. Amen. He sought the Lord, and he did what the Lord told him to do. And so when you when you seek in the Lord, He might tell you, take that job. Amen. It's just a stepping stone, amen, for a promotion, amen. Take that internship. Don't worry about you not getting paid right now. Your pay will come later, amen. So we have to be working, saints, amen. 
we have to be working. You know, growing up on the farm and stuff, that's all we did was work. I mean, we didn't have to wait till we were 16. Shoot, we was working from kids, I mean, babies all, well, I'll say, all the way up, amen. That's where I got my work ethics from, amen. Working hard on the farm, amen, amen. Working hard, amen. Some people don't know what, they, they, they don't know what hard work is because they hardly work, amen, amen, amen. 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 So Labor Day, <laughs> this Labor Day, it might be providing a day off from of work, but let it be a reminder that the Lord rested on the Sabbath. And we too need a rest from our labors, not a day off. A day, a, a, we need a rest from our labor, not a, a day off from the Lord. So make Labor Day a day to remember by focusing on the one who completed his works. Amen. And God is telling us to work hard at what you do. But don't let work become your idol. Amen. Amen. God bless you, saints. So I'm opening up the doors of the church right now. I'm sending the invitation to discipleship and stuff. We have, this is our first Sunday. This is our communion Sunday. So if you haven't gotten your communion uh, elements and you want to participate, amen, go get them uh, now. Amen. We're not getting ready to do it this very moment. I'm going to have prayer first, and then we're going to do the Lord's Supper. Amen. Amen. But make sure, amen, that you heed the word of Paul, amen, that we do everything to the glory of God. Even when we take communion, we do it to the glory of God, amen. Even when we sing, we do it to the glory of God. When we usher, we do it to the glory of God, amen. Don't be looking for titles, amen. Do the work amen. to the glory of God, amen. And you see a need, meet a need, meet a need, amen. Don't just go around and say and, and, and saying that's the janitor's job, that's the usher's job, that's the preacher's job. Amen. God's given this whole workplace to us as a job to do. Amen. Amen. So anyone again, I'm opening up the doors of the church. I said in the beginning, amen. amen. Church is not like it used to be. You know, you can be a member of greater spiritual and you can be in North Carolina. So don't let distance of, 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 of hinder you for becoming a member of greater spiritual is God is placing upon your heart to be a member. But before I said be a member, I want you to be a member of God's family. So if there's someone out there who's not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and I give you the opportunity right now to come to Jesus. Come to him just as you are. Don't try to fix yourself up. Don't try to stop doing some things. Amen. Amen. That's the Lord's work. Because if you could do it on your own, Amen. we would not need Jesus. Amen. So Jesus said, I'm Amen. here to help you. I'm here to save you. I'm here to deliver you. I'm here to set yes. you free. Amen. So anyone today desiring Jesus Christ to be their Lord and Savior, come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Don't, don't try yes. to wait until tomorrow. Amen. Because tomorrow is not promised. It is not Amen. Promised. Amen. It is That's not right. promised. The way it's shooting up and bang bang now and stuff, you know, where you're in your home or on the streets or whatever, where you put your school or whatever. People, they don't care about life. Amen. So you want to know that when you breathe your last breath, that you will breathe it in, and, and that you will wake up in eternity with the Lord. Because the scripture yes. says, when we die in Christ, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But when you die amen. outside of Christ, to die, amen. To be absent from the body is to be present in hell. Can't put it more, more plainly than that. Amen. Amen. So you want to spend eternity with Amen. Or you want to spend eternity in hell or the lake of fire, which is the final destination. Amen. Amen. So again, if you want to become a member of greater spiritual, and I say you don't have a church covenant, a, a, a church or somebody to watch over you, you know, reach out to me. Amen. Reach out to me. Amen. And I welcome you, amen. I'll welcome you as a member amen. of Greater Spiritual. And then if you and then if, yes. you want, and if you don't want to be a member of Greater Spiritual and you, you, you're still interested in church membership, still reach out to me. I know other pastors. I see, I know people, amen. I know people. So I can hook you up with a good pastor, amen. I can hook you up with a Bible believing yeah. pastor, amen. So that's, amen. That's, that's hit me up, amen, amen, amen. If you don't have to hit me up, that's Deacon Ford on there. There's Pastor Bobby out there and stuff, you know. There's some on, on Facebook and stuff. Hit somebody up, amen, amen. Don't amen. let this opportunity go by and you don't yes. have a church and you don't have Jesus, amen. Amen. In way of announcements, I want to announce that our Bible study will resume Wednesday night. 
And we was, we, uh, uh, God led me to Revelation chapter 21 and 22. Right. And we'll be studying about the new heavens and the new earth. Amen. Amen. We'll be studying about that. We're not going to go into all the, we're going we're gonna to see what Revelation says about what the new heaven is and what the new earth is. Amen. And I know sometimes Jews hope a witness might knock on your door and they, 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 they tell you this, what the new earth and new heaven is going to be. I want to go to the word of God and see what the word of God says about this new heaven and new earth. Everybody wants to go to heaven. Amen. But nobody's prepared to go to heaven. Amen. And not everybody. I'm sorry. Not everybody. Some people, some people want to go to heaven, but they're not prepared to go to heaven. Amen. Because I know, you know, there's people out there, you know, they they prepared to go to heaven. They they know they have that a blessed assurance. If they die today, they will wake up in heaven. Amen. Wake amen. up, amen. They wake up rather, you know, in glory. Amen. So that's our announcement again. Bible study resumes Wednesday night at 7 30. Amen. So we have an opportunity to read Revelation 21 and 22. Amen. And so now it's time for a prayer before, you know, before we go into a communion. I'll give you an opportunity to go into prayer. I'm going to pray over you. There's needs in, in your life. Just drop it on Facebook or, or, or whatever you, you know, your prayer request is. I want to praise God. You know, this has been a, another week and stuff, you know. My grandson, Donovan, was, was diagnosed with COVID. But, but praise God, I talked to him last night. And he said his test came back a negative. Amen. 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 But now it is making Jesus. Glory to God. Yes. And then Friday he came home. Boom. Amen. He's home, home, home. So I'm telling you, God is still in the blessing business. Amen. Amen. Yes, so I just thank God, amen, for, for COVID. And I mean, that God is still able to heal COVID. He's able to heal cancer. He's able to heal diabetes. Just, there's not a disease that God can not heal. Amen. 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 So I have faith no matter what, no matter what news I get and stuff, you know, I go to the Lord and prayer and stuff and I leave it there. And so, uh, so we just going to pray if you got needs that you want to pray about. Amen. Amen. And stuff. So we're still praying for, for John Unglesby that he did some blood work and some other things and stuff. So we just trust in God. Amen. That he don't have to go, go for, for, for some radiation or whatever and stuff that God has already healed him. And then again, I want to tell you, Keep your doctor's appointments, amen. Keep your doctor's appointment. If you don't have, make doctor's appointment, amen. Check out your health, amen. Don't take for granted, amen, that you are okay, amen. If it's a headache, it's a backache, foot ache, tooth, toothache, or whatever it is, go to the doctor or dentist to see about it. You know, yes, God is a miracle worker, and yes, God is a healer, amen, but God has placed us amen, to help us, amen, amen, and then he's, he can regulate that high blood pressure, amen, all those things, there's medicine, amen, I know people say, well, all this stuff going into your system, amen, and, the, and that you just use some natural stuff, well, natural stuff, you don't know how natural stuff is, you really don't, amen, you believe everything somebody say, it could be natural, but you don't really know that, you don't really know that, amen, so pray about everything, pray over everything, including your food, amen, including your food. So God is still in the healing business. He's not just doing things for me. Amen. He's doing things for other people. And we need to pray over this, uh, that mur this murdering and spirit that's in our land today. Amen. Uh, last night they said, it was, I think it was six people got shot in DC. Three of them died. Amen. Amen. Last week I heard the mother and a two-year-old and a seven-year-old was in the car two, and, and, and somebody came up walking around shooting this stuff. The two-year head got uh, glazed with a bullet. And now that he's uh, swelling on the brain, amen. Mm -hmm. You know about my great nephew, he's in his home, eight years old, got shot and killed by a bullet, amen. So we got to come against this murdering spirit. We got to come against this stealing spirit. We got to come against this spirit of, 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 of addicts and all kinds of spirit is roaming around today, amen. So God, <coughs> God, gave us power and authority over these uh, demonic spirits and amen. All these things that's, that's upsetting your people today and stuff. So we want to go into God in prayer. Amen. Amen. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord God, we just thank you for that you are still in the blessing business, that you're still in the healing business, Lord God. We come, Lord God, praying, Lord God, that we represent you, first of all, as workers, Lord God, in the venue, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that we are laborers, Lord God, that's working, know that we are working for you, Lord God, no matter who, where our paycheck comes from, Lord God. So we just praying, Lord God, that we will just represent you well in the workforce, Lord God. We pray that we won't be slothful, we won't be late, Lord God. We won't 
going to be grumbling and murmuring, Lord God, but we will render to Caesar what Caesar and render to you what you, Lord God. So, Lord God, help us, Lord God, to look at work, Lord God, as your feel, Lord God, as your opportunity, Lord God, to do something great and mighty for you, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, just do go the extra mile, Lord God, because Jesus went the extra mile for us when he went to the cross and hung and died for us, and on the third day was rose up, uh, listen up, with all power in his hands. We pray for those unemployed that's diligently seeking for work, Lord God. We pray again, Lord God, that doors will be open, Lord God. We pray for those, Lord God, who might have a prison record, Lord God, who might, Lord God, have another kind of record that might be hindering them, Lord God. But we are praying, Lord God, for divine favor, Lord God, grace, Lord God, Lord God, that someone will, Lord God, will hire them, Lord God. And when they get hired, Lord God, let them, Lord God, shine for you, Lord God. Let them not regret that decision, Lord God, to take a chance on them, Lord God. We pray for, Lord God, that many people, Lord God, that is bereaving, Lord God. I lift up Sister Grace McGee, Lord God, whose son, she found her son yesterday, Lord God, deceased, Lord God. Lord God, she has been praying, Lord God, for her son for many a years, Lord God. He had a form of mental illness, but Lord God, but we know that she, Lord God, she was his advocate. And Lord God, her heart is broken, Lord God. Lord God, she can't even breathe right now, Lord God, because the pain is there, Lord God. So we ask you to comfort her, Lord God. And there are others, Lord God, who hearts are broken. God, who hearts are heavy this morning, Lord God. We ask you, Lord God, to just comfort them with your comfort, Lord God. And we pray, Lord God, that we be beside those individuals, Lord God. Encourage them, Lord God, to let out the grief, Lord God. Express their grief. Some need to cry. Some need to shout, Lord God. Some need, Lord God, to do different things, Lord God, to get the poison out of the system, Lord God, so the healing process can take place, Lord God. Again, Lord God, we come against that murdering spirit, that stealing spirit, Lord God, that the people who stole would not continue to steal. People who were killed, Lord God, we convicted, Lord God. Those, Lord God, that's on the run, Lord God, we pray, Lord God, that they convicted, and they will turn themselves in, Lord God. We are praying, Lord God, and we come against, Lord God, those spirits right now, Lord God, that's removing people. You said, Lord God, that we should not steal, that we should not kill, Lord God. And Lord God, we pray for healing, Lord God. There are people, Lord God, who are sick, Lord God, with all manners of disease, God. We pray, Lord God, that you would touch our bodies right now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Move, Lord God, in every part of our body, from the head to the feet, Lord God. Heal, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Make whole, Lord God. Heal those kidneys, Lord God, the disease. Heal those lungs that are diseased, Lord God. Heal those backs, Lord God, and knees, Lord God. Lord God, the rack with pain, arthritis pain, Lord God. Take it away right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. Those who have headaches, Lord God. Those who have migraines, Lord God. Those, Lord God, who have dementia and Alzheimer's, Lord God. Those who have ADHD, Lord God. Those, Lord God, who have autism, Lord God. Everything, Lord God. Those who have uh, multiple cirrhosis, Lord God. All men or diseases, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you will heal this morning, Lord God. Give your people peace in their bodies, Lord God. Give them rest from that pain right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And Lord God, we just pray, Lord God, for the individuals in Haiti, Lord God, in Louisiana, and what's going on in Afghanistan, Lord God. We put it on the altar right now, Lord God. You told, Lord God, that we work so, Lord, we can help other people, Lord God. So we ask you, Lord God, that I set our hearts of what we can do to help the situation in Haiti. What what can we do to help that situation in Louisiana, Lord God? We thank you, Lord God, that the power has been restored, Lord God. Lord God, I got a call from Dr. Gammon, Lord, text, Lord God, from Dr. Gammon, and her, her the power has been restored in New Orleans, Lord God. First, she was saying it could be six weeks, Lord God, but Lord God, you was merciful, Lord God, and Lord God, before the, even the week was out, Lord God, the power has been restored, Lord God, and now, Lord God, the cleaning up process will still begin, Lord God, and we pray, Lord God, that those who lost it all shall recover, Lord God. We pray all those families families, Lord God, who lost loved ones, Lord God, in the midst of that storm, Lord God. We pray for Afghanistan, Lord God, all the individuals that's left behind, Lord God. We know the door is not completely closed, Lord God. The opportunity, Lord God, has not been gone past, Lord God. So we are praying, Lord God, that they will continue, Lord God, bring home, Lord God, our military from Afghanistan, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing, Lord God. I don't want to be first to know, I don't understand it all, Lord God, but I'm just trusting you, Lord God. And I pray for the leadership, Lord God, that they 
they're doing the right thing, Lord God. If they're not doing the right thing, Lord God, Lord God, you would you would take it, Lord God, and you would do the judge, Lord God. And so, Lord God, we pray for our school system, Lord God. There's so many in school now, Lord God. They're coming down with the virus, and so many people are complaining, like, who gonna keep my child safe, Lord God? Who gonna keep the child safe is, is Jesus, Lord God. He is, Lord God. He is the one that's be with our children, Lord God, because our children are not safe even in our homes, Lord God. So, Lord God, we're not looking for the school system to keep us safe. We're looking to you, Lord God, to keep our children safe, Lord God. So, whether they're at home or at school, whether they're at play of, Lord God, we plead the blood of Jesus over them, Lord God. The environment, Lord God, be kept safe, Lord God. And Lord God, we just pray, Lord God. <clears throat> For the addicts, Lord God, those who are battling with addiction, Lord God, we are not looking down on them, Lord God, but we are praying for their deliverance, Lord God. We're praying, Lord God, that they have a made up mind, Lord God, that they don't want to stay in the shape they are in, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, that you'll give them a change of heart and change of mind, Lord God, to put the bottle down, Lord God, put the joint down, put the drugs down, Lord God, and Lord God, and seek you, Lord God, because Lord God, we know, Lord God, we're going to take, Lord God, the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord God, to break an addiction, Lord God. So we just calling upon you, Lord God, to break that addiction, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, for those, Lord God, with the virus, Lord God. And we pray, Lord God, you continue to heal, eradicate this virus, Lord God. Let it not, uh, Lord, let it not come to another form of the virus, Lord God. Let it end with this Delta virus, Lord God. And so we just praying, Lord God, that you eradic eradicate it out of our environment, out of our world, Lord God. And Lord God, we plead, plead the blood of Jesus over it right now, in the name of Jesus, that you would take the sting, Lord God. You take the sickness out of, of this virus right now, Lord God. And then, Lord God, help us, Lord God. Help ourselves, Lord God. Lord God, help us, Lord God, with the mask, Lord God. Help us, Lord God, social distance, Lord God. Help us do what you've called us to do, Lord God. And so we thank you, Lord God. We pray for Tania, Lord God, that you will heal her body, Lord God. Don't know what's going on, but we just trust in, that you will heal her Tania, Lord God, and Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And there's so much, Lord God, that we need to pray for, Lord God. And so we continue actually, Lord God, have your way, God. Have your way. Have your way with everyone who's listening to me right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. And we give you all praise and all the glory, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And those who are still with me for communion right now, I ask you to, to uh, gather your communion uh, elements. Amen. amen. And remember that this, that this communion table, amen, is a table of healing. It's a table of deliverance. It's a table of reconciliation and salvation and forgiveness. And at this table, we find that the blood of Jesus has not lost its power, that the blood of Jesus still works. It flows, it flows, amen, from the highest peak to the lowest valley, amen. It flows, it covers us, it protects us, amen. So we thank God for the blood of Jesus that he shed on Calvary for us. And, and, and communion was instituted on the, and, and, on, <coughs> excuse me, and the last night before Jesus' crucifixion, amen, in the upper room with his disciples, he took the communion elements and he passed them around. He First, he passed around the bread, amen, he blessed it, amen, and he said, this bread represents my body. He said, eat it in remembrance of me. Then he passed around the, the juice, amen, and he passed that around. He prayed over it, he blessed it, and he said, this, this juice represents my shed blood. As often as you drink it, you do it in remembrance of me. And so we do communion. We have a greater spirit. We do it the first Sunday of every month. Amen. And so we set aside that, that, that Sunday to remember Jesus. But we know we don't just remember Jesus just on the first Sunday. We don't just remember Jesus on a Sunday morning. We remember Jesus all the time because Jesus is always working. Amen. But he only died once. Amen. He only died once for the remission of our sins. Amen. So we just remember Jesus on this first Sunday in September uh, of the sacrifice that he did on our behalf. And so we ask, and we are supposed to take it worthily. And so we ask you to search your heart, search your heart. You know, in a sense that you are committed, that you have not sought forgiveness for. So we ask you to confess your sins before we come to the table. Amen. Because he said we confess our sins, that he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. So I'm going to read 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and I'm going to read verses 23 through 33. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, reads, verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, 
that the Lord Jesus in the night in which he, he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Therefore, whosoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner should be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But a man must examine himself and in so doing, he is to eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks, eats and drinks judgment to himself, if he does not judge the body rightly. For this reason, men among you are weak and sick, and a number sleep. But if we judge ourselves rightly, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are disciplined by the Lord, so that we would not be condemned along with the world. So then, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for another, one another. If anyone has, is hungry, let him eat at home, so that you would not come together for judgment. The remaining matters I will arrange when I come. Amen. Lord God, we lift up this communion to you, Lord God. We lift up this bread and we lift up this juice. We ask you to bless it and sanctify it, Lord God. We ask you, Lord God, even as natural elements, Lord God, let us, Lord God, remember the spiritual, Lord God, the spiritual symbolism of communion, Lord God, that this bread represents your body, Lord God, and this juice represents your shared blood, Lord God. And then, Lord God, we ask you to forgive us our sins, Lord God, that we will, we will partake of this communion in an unworthy manner, Lord God. Forgive us, Lord God, that we can come, Lord God, cleanly before the communion table, Lord God, and partake of the elements, Lord God. And so we thank you for your for saving us one day when we was lost, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for creating us a clean heart and a right spirit, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for giving us a new walk, a new talk, Lord God, and a new name and glory, this, Lord God. So we thank you, Lord God, for our relationship with you, Lord God. Now we can come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy in the time of need, Lord God. And Lord God, again, bless this bread, Lord God, that represents your body. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Take the bread. Again, it represents Jesus' body. And so let us eat together. Amen. Let us take this juice and let's drink together. Amen, amen. So thank you all for the time that you spent with me this morning. Amen. I pray that this word reached somebody and that you was edified and that the devil was horrified. And I pray that we'll become better workers for the Lord. Amen. Better workers for the Lord. Amen. Amen. And so uh, continue to enjoy the rest of your day. Amen. And fellowship with the Lord. And remember on this Labor Day weekend, amen, that we are all laborers for Christ. <laughs> Number two, that the labels are still few. Amen. And God is still looking for more laborers in his vineyard. And so if you want to begin to be a laborer in the vineyard, amen, just contact me. Amen. So amen. God bless you. Amen. So good to see everybody. On, on, on. Amen. Amen. Good to see amen. Rebecca. Amen. I see the phone number of, of, of Sister Bridget. Amen. And, and Sister Alina. Amen. Ford, and amen. Cruz, amen. And, and God bless you, everyone on Facebook. Amen. May heaven smile mm -hmm. upon you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise you. Amen. Love you, Pastor. Love you, too. Have okay. a blessed day. Amen. Amen. Amen.